Hi, and welcome to part two of the terrain tutorial. In the last video, I showed you which free add-ons will help you and the first technique for blending two textures together. In this video, I will show you two more techniques so that you can build even more complex shaders that make your terrain look realistic. We now start here again in our window with the texture that we still know from the last video. We import the next texture directly and link this to this one again. I've already prepared another one here. Copy the file path. We already know this from the last video. And now we create a principal BSDF node and click on it with Shift, Control and T. Here we insert our file path. select our files and have created the next texture. We make a group out of this again, delete the displacement, Control and G, scale goes in here, BSDF here, and here the displacement. The texture would of course look different with a steeper slope. So this is now our stone texture for the walls or the cliffs. Let's rename it to keep it clear. We only want to display this texture for the steep slopes. To do this, we first have to create one. The terrain is still far too flat for us. Let's make this smaller for now and switch to the edit mode by pressing the tab key. To show how this node setup works, I will do it quickly. We switch to the top view by pressing 7, then we select the circle select tool, increase the radius a little and randomly mark a few faces here. We then activate proportional editing. This means that the surrounding faces move proportionally to our selection. If we drag this one up, the surrounding mesh will move with it. We can use the mouse wheel to increase or decrease the radius, in which the mesh changes. I'm just going to drag this a little up. Maybe select this again and also drag it up. We just bring a little more structure to our terrain. Now we have a few hills and I can show you this technique. To use this texture only for the slope, we have to give our shader information about it. There are many ways to do this. Because we have a displacement node here, we can just take the normals from our object. I will also show you later why this is not possible, and also another way to use the same node setup for another important function. Now let's open the menu here by pressing N, click on Create, then on Tools, and finally on Wait from Slope. We switch to weight paint mode now, and as you can see, we have created this vertex group or heat map. Everything that is green is relatively steep. Everything that is yellow is a little less, and everything that is red is flat. We scroll down here. Now we need to create a color attribute out of this vertex group. We cannot integrate the vertex group into our shader, but we can integrate color attributes. To do this, we switch to vertex paint mode, Here you click on paint at the top and then on vertex color from weight. This is how we create a color attribute from a vertex group. We don't really see any changes here, but something has definitely happened. To see and use this now, we change the viewport shading, open the shader again and insert the created color attribute here. The name of the attribute doesn't matter, but we call it slope to keep everything clear. Now we also select slope call here. Hold down the shift and control keys and click on it to display it directly. As you can see here, it is now automatically connected. What we are going to do now is create a color ramp and put it in between. This allows us to control the contrast again. You remember, everything that is black is displayed in the bottom texture and the lighter it is, the more you can see the other texture. Just like here with the noise node. Everything that is black is in one texture, 
and everything that is white is in the other one. What we want now is that our texture is only visible on the slope. So we simply turn this color map around, we invert it. Now the mask is correct and the stone texture is visible on the slope. We can simply copy this and put it in between. Now we link the textures the same way as we did with the previous ones. So we take this node and connect it here. And this mix node with the other one. The previous texture goes in at the top and the new one goes in at the bottom. If we now select this as a factor, exactly the same thing happens as here. Let me straighten that up a little bit. We could continue building here for as long as we like and mix more textures into our node tree. So we now select this as a factor to color our walls according to the color attribute. Let's take a look at this. You see, now the texture of the stones is based on the slope. Now we connect our mix color node to the displacement again and switch to Render Preview to see the displacement. I think this makes our terrain even more realistic. I will make the node tree a little tidier here. To explain, this is the original texture. This whole thing here mixes the second texture in. The forest floor too. And with these nodes here, the third texture is mixed in, the rock walls. We can always deactivate the nodes with M and see what our shader looked like before. We can also activate it again by pressing M. This allows us to see the changes that we make when we add or remove the layers. If we don't want that, we can deactivate it. All right. We have also connected the third texture in this way. What is very practical now that we have always connected the scale factor here. So we can now create a value node and use that as the size for our texture. This looks so strange now because the value is zero. But as soon as we set it back to one, like the value before, everything looks normal. We can now enlarge or reduce the connected texture all at once so you can adapt the same shader to meshes of any size. In our case, one fits. I just wanted to show you that this is also a possibility to control this. Earlier I said that you can also mask the slope in another way, but we didn't do that here and I will show you why now. In our example, it doesn't work because of the displacement. We can create a separate XYZ node and use Ctrl T to do the mapping for us. We have to delete this, we don't need it. And can now copy the color ramp here to get the same result. Now we use the Z axis as a factor and have a look at this. If we use normal instead of generated for the coordinates, then we also mask the slope. However, this does not work because the slope is calculated including the displacement. If we deactivate the displacement, it would look the same, like the one above with the color attribute. Click on it while holding Ctrl and Shift to display the node. And as you can see, it's more or less the same. But because of this displacement node, it doesn't work for us. What you can use is object. With this, we mask according to the height on the object. This allows you to determine the height up to which the texture should be displayed. For the next technique, we create another principal BSDF node. Copy the file paths of the texture again, and you know the rest. And here we go back. 
We now have our moss here, which we want to combine with the other textures. First, set the same scaling. Now we want to draw the moss ourselves, for example. To do this, we first have to go into the vertex paint mode here, create a new attribute and give it a name. I call it moss, for example. To give Blender information about where the texture should be displayed, we first have to paint on the mesh. Here we can choose different colors to mask with. For example, red, green or blue. This is how we select the blue channel only. If we draw with it here, then we draw blue. Let's switch to green. Then I will draw green. And the same with red. Let's delete that again. We will stick with red, but make the radius a little bigger. Just a little bit of red here, which will later be our moss. We can now add this red mask here again as a color attribute. Similar to the slope, we can simply take this and copy it. Connect this together. Everything as we know. We want only the red color as a factor. Otherwise, if we draw with more colors, we would mix the mask. So first we have to extract the red color from the color attribute. We do this by creating a separate color node that comes in between here. So the color goes in here, but we only want the red color out. We see that our moss is where we drew it earlier with the red color. To make the node tree smaller, we can also close the nodes. I will leave them open so that you don't lose track, but that's how it would work, by clicking here. If we now want to continue painting the moss, we switch back to vertex paint mode. We still have the red color selected. And this way we can also see how our terrain changes as we paint. The same applies of course if we have other textures connected. If we want to add another texture, we select a different color to separate them, for example blue, then we simply switch to blue at the top here and take the blue output instead of the red output. Then exactly the same thing happens as now with red. At the end I changed a few things on my shader. I mixed the moss in with a noise texture, like I showed you in the last part. I liked that better. But vertex paint is great if you want to draw a path for example. Here below I have added a mix color node set to lighten to displacement of the stones. This allowed me to enlarge the stones even further and make them look even bigger. I used the brightness to control the strength and the direction of the effect. Everything below 0.5 makes it collapse and everything above 0.5 makes the texture inflate. Next time I will show you how you can combine different blending techniques and adjust your textures even more. I hope you were able to learn a few things again and see you next time.